keep the tempo pretty fast. And um, that's kind of similar to how I played at um, Maryland um, back in the state. So um, looking forward to it. And looking forward to being the import scoring punch the fire lacked last season. I'm a scorer, I'm a shooter, um, but I also um, am really good on defense. So I think whenever we need a bucket, uh, I definitely can can make that happen. It's been for you, like, you know, being quarantined, staying at home. Um, it's been pretty tough, obviously. Um, I'm actually in South Jersey. Um, I got my family scattered around. Um, so I'm trying to keep in touch, but we've been using Zoom calling, FaceTiming, um, just talking to them and communicating with them with, um, anytime I can. So uh, tough, especially being away from ball, hooping, yeah. uh, training my girls. So that's been pretty tough, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've been following you because um, I know you play with, like, Bones and, you know, Domo. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I seen you at Maryland. So, like, how was that? I know you seen, like, I talked with Domo, but um, just talk about, about your career just playing at Maryland and that, that whole experience, as you know, as a college athlete. Oh, wow. Um, Maryland it was a great experience for me. Uh, I want to say it's like a second home for sure. Um, I've established a lot of relationships, obviously, being out there. Um, not only from um, my coaches and teammates, but um, just getting involved in the community. Mm -hmm. um, when I got there, I want to say maybe my freshman, sophomore year, maybe my sophomore year, um, I actually started working with PG Parks and Rex. Um, so I got even deeper involved in the community, meeting the kids, and some of those kids started, started to come to the game. But um, from a basketball playing standpoint, um, definitely tough transitioning from high school um, to college. Um, coming out, being an All-American, um, and all the, the hype and the accolades, you know, all the pressures placed upon me. But um, big adjustment. I had good coaches, good teammates there pushing me along the way. Yeah. Um, definitely dealt with a lot of adversity. Um, that's something, you know, we can, we can touch into. But uh, yeah. definitely a good ride, you know. We did a lot of good things there. Um, yeah. And I had the opportunity to play with a lot of greats. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, talking about adversity, um, I saw – so, did you – um, you got injured going into, like, in high school? You need to tear your ACL. So, um, honestly, I tore my ACL uh, the summer going into my senior year. So, I didn't play my whole senior year. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I went from completely not playing um, and then straight into college. So, not only was I transitioning from just being a – high school athlete, but I'm coming off a really crucial injury um, to have at such a young age, you know, so I got to battle through that and then deal with the transition, you know, we deal with college being away from home, yeah. um, the, the pace of the game, it speeds up, learning time management, classes, you know, being on time for things, you pretty much go from <laughs> being a kid to working a nine to five um, with, with extra hobbies on the side, so um, it was definitely really tough, but I did tear my ACL my senior year, um, rehab from that, got back, got myself into the groove, and then my junior year um, at Maryland, I tore my opposite ACL and meniscus. Okay. Dang. So how, how was it? I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's a grind. Was it like, how many months did it take you to get back? And, you know, what advice would you give someone in college, you know, that's, you know, gone through that same injury? Um, for me, uh, both the injuries were uh, different. Um, so the first time I tore um, my knee, it was just my ACL. Mm -hmm. um, the rehab process was pretty strenuous, I thought, at the time, because it's my first time. I'm young. Uh, I've never had a, a major injury before. So it was definitely tough. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I feel like the one that I suffered in college was tougher, um, just knowing that I had to fight back yeah. uh, from my injury. Um, my freshman year, I went from averaging, I think, three to four minutes a game, three points a game. I was barely playing to um, probably, I'll say, recovery time. I think I played, started playing a lot during NCAA tournament my freshman year in the ACC tournament. Um, and then I went from three points a game to 14 points a game within my sophomore year. Um, so dealing with that fighting through that, Naismith watch list, all these accolades are coming out, I've, 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 I'm back, right? right? And it happens again. Dang, yeah. so I think the second time was a little tougher mentally because it's like, dang, 
I got to go through this again. Yeah. But yeah. physically, you know, the grind is the same. You got to get in there and you got to work. Um, and it's definitely tough. I would say I didn't really get back to my explosive self fully until like a full like year, year, year and some change where I knew that I was fully, I wasn't but uh, 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 labor in my knee, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just fully locked in and, and comfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, so like your your senior year, um, you had a killer year. Like it was just looked like the game slowed down for you, just balling. So, and then you got drafted. Um, so I know you saw the video with Donald. If you want to talk about that, um, that feeling when you got drafted, you know, that whole that whole experience. How was that for you? Um, it was definitely bittersweet for me. Um, like I said, I've, you know, worked so hard at Maryland, gave them, you know, a dedicated five years and yeah. to, to finally get to that point that, you know, every girl dreams about, um, growing up to, to, to hear a name called or to see it on TV. It was definitely a monumental moment. Um, and definitely for me, um, when I was little, my dad used to take me to the New York Liberty games. I, you know, I live 15 minutes outside of New York. Yeah. Um, train ride you know jump on a path I'm right there so he used to take me there favorite player Becky Hammond okay Flashy, you know she she was the rook she yeah. was the rook when I was I started coming to the game so she was getting it done so that was even more monumental to me the the team that I grew up watching like I got drafted there um so I thought it was a great opportunity for you know my family to come in um and see me play um, but when you get to that level, it's definitely cutthroat. It's hard to get in. Mm-hmm. It's hard to stay. Um, so you always got to keep working and being your P's and Q's, um, obviously, when you get to that level. Yeah. So why why is that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you know the answer. Why is it so, like, cutthroat? I know it's not a lot of spots, but... Yeah, yeah I would just say it's just, it's just a lot. It's a lot of talent. It's a lot of talent, and it's just not enough teams to hold the mm-hmm. amount of talent that's, that's now coming in. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think about, for me, I think about people that are older than me that I've seen come out of college killers, mm-hmm. even when overseas for a while and they have like a five year stint, even myself when overseas for four years and now I, I feel like I've done everything, you know, I'm ready to come back and give my knowledge to the kids, but Right. Um, for somebody that's still passionate and wants to play this game for a long time, it gets tough because not everybody doesn't want to go overseas to play. Sure. We want to stay at home. We want to we want to play for our fans. Yeah. And, you know, I just don't understand, you know, with things going on now, like these these new girls, they're tough. They can go and like they deserve to be shown on that big stage. Right. So, like, you know. I understand we got vets that's been in the league for very long and we're paying homage. Um, but I feel like it's time for a new wave, you know? And if I got to be the first one to say it, I'll say it. But we, we need to get them out there. Like, there's no way we have players of the year um, only staying in the league for two years. Like, you're not, you're not going to sit here and tell me this kid's not working hard. Yeah. You know? That's big. Like, that's, that's so huge. Like, especially – the McDonald All Americans, like you said, the player of the year for the whole state, shoot the whole, you know, nation, the country, and then they're the ones getting cut. So it's like I agree with you. I, I totally agree with that. Um so like you went overseas, you was in Israel your first year, then you went to Australia. Yep. Um, yeah, how was that? Just in those two countries. Um, I wanna say I was really lucky, um, based on the two places that I uh played for my career. Um, Israel, I wanna say it was definitely more Americanized than than I thought. Um, I tell everybody that um I met a lot of people there, a lot of people that I played against, you know, it was it's more so um very close knit when you go to Israel, very competitive. Um they they wanna bring you over there and they expect you to do what you do. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean scoring, but whatever type of play you are, be yourself. You need to play your role and do that efficiently. So um, over there, it was just definitely a really good experience for me, um, understanding the pro life and, and the transition from college to pro. Uh, most of the resources that you have in college are not going to have overseas, more, yeah. more so than more so than 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 often. Like, yeah. like you're, you're not going to have that. Um, so I kind of lucked up, you know, on the car, um, food was great. Um, 
everybody, all the locals that I met were really, really great. Um, we ended up doing really, really good my uh, years playing in Israel. Yeah. Um, so I had a really good experience there. Um, so in Australia, um, that was a really good experience as well. Um, they were definitely more uh, college oriented. Uh, so we had ice baths, uh, we got workouts, we got two a days, uh, we have to do community service, you know, um, it was just very, you know, straight to the point, clear cut, professional, um, and I played in Israel, I mean, I played in Australia for two years, um, and we ended up winning the championship uh, my first year, um, we played uh, Liz, we played Big Liz um, over there for the chip, so yeah, I had a great time. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, that, I know that's pretty inspiring. You know, you say you coach and you give back to, you know, the community. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you probably have a lot of youngest you probably coach or work with, but if you had to pick one that you think that's probably the next you or walking in your shoes or has the potential, uh, who would that be? If you would pick? <laughs> mm. Mm. That's kind of tough, but... <laughs> all right, so I got two, because it's two different ages. I got two different ages. Let me go with that. All right, all right, it's cool. So, so, so it's, this, uh, it's this little young and she about five. So this is why I say, I got I to gotta throw her out there. I'm going to shout out. Her name is Sosa Cruz. She's from Atlanta. Okay, she just loves basketball. Um, it just reminds me of myself. I've been playing since I was about two years old natural love for the game so I've been I've been around it forever um but for her it just reminds me of myself she loves to be around it she's doing drills she just wants to impress you know everybody with her skills so I think I think I think she's gonna go places um and as far as I want I'm gonna go high school I'm gonna go high school um I must I'm gonna have to say AZ okay AZ okay all right yeah I'm gonna have to say skill um she got the body body for it she got a pro body she can shoot it she can put it on the floor mm-hmm. she got every level of the game so i think the sky's the limit for her yeah for sure for sure all right well i think that was all my questions uh, let's i want to ask you have any more other words about just like what's going on right now and how this is going to affect really basketball not even just the WNBA, but overseas and in general um right now I think I feel like everybody is just trying to figure out what we're going to do you know for the future um for everybody out there that you know that's stuck and that's mm-hmm. listening any of the athletes just keep working working on your game keep being you um and you know the stars will align yeah that's what's up